took care of them away and went out on their way. And David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire. And their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captive. Then David and the people were with him, lifted up their voice with and wept until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives were taken captive. Ahaman, the, the Zerilites, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, and Kemet, the Kemite, Camelite. And David <clears throat> was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him, because the souls of all the people were grieved, every man his sons and his daughters. <laughs> Isn't that strange that they didn't say that they were distressed distress over their wife, but they was, they was under stress because of their sons and their daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord. Let me, let me go back to that because that's a very important point. But David encouraged himself in the Lord, his God. And David said unto, said to Abeath the priest, Ahimelech Ahimel the son, I pray thee, Bring me hither the ephod, which is the garment of, of the priest. Now, how many know that David was a uh, king and priest? All right. Okay. And Abibatha brought thither the ephod to David. And David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Or shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue. For thou shalt surely overtake them, and with, without fail recover all. I want to talk just for a few minutes about don't quit. Amen. About don't quit. There are impossible and seemingly impossible situations that sometimes occur uh, when it comes to the relationships that we have with God. And sometimes they occur to the point to where that we almost want to quit. We almost want to give up and we just really just don't want to have anything else to do with the situations or the things that we must face. And we uh, seemingly would be better off if, if, if we were not in the certain positions or certain uh, situations that we were in. And we sometimes feel like we're in those situations because we said yes to the Lord. It's partly true and it's partly not true. Uh, there are some things that occurs in life that just simply comes along with life. But then there are some things that happen simply because you have been anointed to do such things in life. And when you have been given the obligations and the charge and the oaths and the vows to do certain things, there's one thing that you cannot do. Uh, you cannot release yourself of those obligations, those vows, are those oaths. And because of that, we must understand that you don't have any release from God to quit. God did not make us to quit. God did not design us to fail. God did not design us to stop doing what we were called to do. Now, there's a difference between stopping and quitting. The reason why we stop doing certain things is simply sometimes because we got caught. <laughs> And, and certain situations make us not want to do them anymore because we got caught at doing certain things. So we stop, but that doesn't mean that we quit. <laughs> In other words, we have not released ourselves from the obligation, so we still continue on, but we just don't let you see it. <laughs> because we haven't been released from the thing that we say we stop doing. Okay? Uh, if you're in the habit of practicing sin, though you say you have stopped doing your sin. Uh, how many know that Paul says, when I would go to do good, uh, evil is always present in me, so you cannot stop 
and then all of a sudden quit doing what you're doing on your own strength because you have not been given a release from life to stop sinning. <laughs> so since we have made a oath that as long as we're in the body and our heart keeps pumping and our lungs keep inhaling and exhaling, we have life in us, we all have the potential of sin. Everybody say, I have the potential to sin. Now, that doesn't mean that we sin, uh, you know, automatically. We sin by choice. That means that we assign ourselves to the sin, and then we see ourselves doing it, and then we go ahead and do it. Whether that be premeditated or whether that be spontaneously, we all have the potential for sin. Because the Bible said in all, we, in one man we all fail. That one man was Adam. Now, we see uh, there are certain situations that have become uh, important to David enough to know that David has these certain things that will come after him in life because he started out wrong. A lot of people don't talk about it, but David and his brothers did not have the same mother. And David refers to this in the psalm when he said, In sin did my mother conceive me, and I was shaped in iniquity. And to be shaped in iniquity and to be formed in sin it gives us an indication that uh, he was of another mother other than the brothers that he had with him, and therefore he was put out to do the job that they were not availed to do because their mothers was the mother of the house, and he was an outside child. <laughs> All right, just sit there and act like you don't know what I'm talking about. Because he was a half-brother and because he was not full-blood brother, you know, to, 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 the, to the siblings, the ones that uh, was Jesse's favorite was the ones that were in the house. But the one that was put out was the one that the mama made, you know, him not have much responsibility for. So his responsibility was taking care of sheep. And because his responsibility was taking care of sheep, the last becomes first. And you know what the Bible says, that, that ultimately the last become first. And then those that have been oppressed now takes their liberty as God heals them and delivers them. They that were oppressed is now set free. And now those that were in obscurity now comes to the front. Those that have been said to that there'll never be anything, God will automatically bring them up to the front in order to prove that the wise have no sense. In other words, the Bible talks about all those that people that think that they're wise. The Bible said he takes those things that are prudent, those things that are, are, are you know, that are, that are not considered to be wise. And he takes and he makes that supersede everything that you think is wise. In other words, he makes, he makes those people that you say will never be anything. <laughs> Jump above all those that you put up here. <laughs> and it's, it's not because they didn't want to quit. It's because they couldn't quit. How many in here just really just wanted to quit? I mean, you wanted, to, you wanted out. You wanted an out clause whenever it, came to, whenever it comes to your obligations uh, or doing the things that God has called you to do. I don't know about you, but there, sometimes I wish there was an out clause in this thing. Sometimes I wish God would have just told me how it was going to be and, and given me the choice to do something. Uh, but because I'm obligated, there are some things that I just can't stop doing. I, I can't quit doing. Let me put it like that. I can't quit on the church. Uh, though you can because you're not obligated. <laughs> see, see when, you, when, you've been, when you've been given a charge and whenever you have made the vow... And I know you sang the song and you sang it for, you sang it for, uh, for traditional sake. You say, I made a vow to the Lord. I, I made a vow to the Lord and 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 But as soon as it gets hard, you do what? Let me give you another. I'm a soldier. I'm a soldier. I'm a soldier. I'm a soldier. 
If I die, let me die. If I die, let me die. I'm a soldier. I'm a soldier. If I die, let me die. If I die, let me die. I want to ask a question. Have you been drafted or have you enlisted? There's a difference between being drafted into the army and enlisting in the army. See, because if you enlist, you can you can get out. But if you've been drafted, <laughs> look at somebody and say, "We got to go." <laughs> so if 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 we've been drafted by the Lord. If the Lord has given us the responsibility to carry the weight of the ministry and to do the function of ministry, then what makes us say to everybody and everybody around us that you can just quit when you get ready? And I can't tell you how many times that I felt like quitting. But you know what I had to do? I had to go and find all the oil and you name it and, and all the olive oil that I can find. And I poured all in my bathtub. And I had to bathe myself in all this oil. And I, and I told myself that you might feel like quitting, but you can't quit. Now, now, now what I do that for, I do that so I can remind myself that quitting is not in my vocabulary. That if I have to come through here greasy, <laughs> I'm reminded that I can't quit. If I have to come through here and everybody look at me and laugh at me, and I'm the only one in here, I cannot quit. Look at somebody say, I can't quit. See, see, we, 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 we get it all wrong because here's, here's what we do. We, we feel like, <laughs> we feel like that, that since, we, since we joined the church, <laughs> since we joined God, that, that <laughs> and since we, we make up our own mind about things, that, that there are some things that we could quit on. But you can't join this church that I'm talking about. You got to be born. And I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not talking about physical birth into a building. Your mama had you while she was going to this church, and, and this is the church where you were born into. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm talking about being born in the spirit into the body of Christ. And so it makes me do two things. Number one, it makes me declare it. I've got, to, I've got to say it enough to myself that, that God has set me up. Uh, there's no coincidence that you're here today. This is a setup. Look at your neighbor and say, this is a setup. This is a setup in order for God to bless you today because somebody in here felt like giving up. Somebody in here felt like quitting. Somebody in here felt like walking away from it all. Somebody in here felt like that there's nothing else that you can do. But as long as God has not released you by taking breath from you, I want to encourage you that you cannot quit. Uh, don't quit and don't you stop. Now, you might get weary. <laughs> you may get tired from the race but don't give up on the race come on now you could get tired from doing what God told you to do but don't you give up on what God told you to do so if I'm going to declare it here's what happened the, Amal uh, the Amalekites came in from the south and David and them had left in the north and when they had left in the north the south was open and that's the way it normally is when you're about doing what God called you to do you're focused on what's in front of you 
and you never had any idea that what you were, what was behind you was going to be attacked from the rear. But here's the thing that we have got to be reminded of is that the things that we've been taught will protect us from our past. And so we got to start declaring what God said. And what God said was that David was a man after his own heart. And because David was a man after his own heart, he was given the same summation as Joshua was given, that there would not be a man would be able to stand against him. In other words, as long as he was under the anointing of God, then he would be protected by God. As long as you are doing the things of God and taking care of God's business, God will take care of your business. So it was not David's doing that made him king. Everybody has a defining moment when you find out what your true calling is. Your true calling is not necessarily to attend to other folks' matter. But your, 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 your calling is to make sure that as you're doing the things in the world that you learn what your skills are in order that you might use them to better yourself in the spirit. David was out in the field and it gave him a right that whenever it came to fight Goliath, it gave him a resume that read like this. David, what gives you the right that if I were to let you fight the giant? I believe that I was born to fight giants because I faced a situation that was greater than what I was. And that was that a lion came along and took away one of my father's lambs. And he had the lamb in his mouth and I was able to run and overtake him and take the lamb out of his mouth unharmed and kill the lion. Now how in the world that he overtook the lion before the lion killed the lamb is beyond my imagination. But before he could get a chance to kill him, David had already killed him. So what the enemy meant to be evil, God can turn it around. And before the enemy can use his tools to kill you with, David <laughs> had a resume that he could write to the king. And so, well, that's just one reference, but give me two references. And if you give me two references, it's a reference that out of the mouth of two or three witnesses. The word of the Lord shall be established. And so here's my second uh, portion of resume that reads in my second reference is that a bear came along. Something that was bigger and tougher than a lion. Now that doesn't mean that the, the, the bear was the king of the jungle. It just means that the bear was better than the lion. That means that this circumstance was greater than that circumstance. Because now that I had the ability to do what I did... It means that I was still striking with fear, but this was a greater fear. Uh, you got to hear what I'm saying. It's not necessarily the thing that you keep on going through, but it's the thing that you keep on going through that becomes greater in intensity that makes you have an ability to want to give up even harder or faster or quicker. But here's the thing that David did. David said, though my problem was insurmountable, I used the same method, but then I took it a different route. And before the bear can lay the lamb down to kill it, I killed it. But see, he didn't take it out of the, the, the bear's mouth. He took it out of the bear's arms. And as he took it out of the bear's arms and mouth, it becomes greater than just in the mouth. Because the claws are longer and the teeth are just as long. And so he's fighting something that had an arsenal that was greater than what he fought formerly face. But how many know that God can take an impossible situation? The Bible said what is impossible with man is possible with God. I wish I had a witness in here. So I come to declare that I'm able to become a giant fighter and I will ultimately kill the giant because my God that gave me the strength. Look at here, look at here. At you have a weakness. You got to understand that when you're weak, then that's when you're strong. You got to understand that whenever you're ready to give up, that's when strength comes. I can't get no help in here. Uh, whenever, whenever there's an opportunity 
for you to lose your ability and strength, you got to understand that you need to trade your weakness for the strength of God. Look at, look at Paul. Paul said, Lord, remove this thorn in my flesh. Get this enemy off of me. The messenger from Satan. God didn't send it. But the messenger from Satan came from Satan that it would bother me for the revelation that I had. The revelation that I had is that you don't have to take nothing off the devil. That's the reason why the enemy was giving him that thorn in the flesh. The reason why the enemy gave Paul the thorn in the flesh was not that he had so much knowledge of what heaven looked like. But it was the knowledge of understanding that there is no weapon that's formed against him shall prosper and he wanted the church to know that you're fighting an adversary that has no power and if you have an adversary that has no power then you can pursue it and you can take back Ah, you got to hear what I'm saying. And because of that, you got to start declaring what the word of God said. Look at somebody and say, declare it. Oh, that means declare, 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 declare. That means declare, 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 declare. That means keep on saying it. Even when it looks like it's not happening, keep on saying it. Even when it looks like it'll never happen, keep on saying it. Even when it feels like it's not going anywhere, keep on saying it. Look at somebody and say, keep on saying it. High five and say, you keep on saying what God said about you. Don't worry about what they say. You worry about what God said. And God said you're the head and not the tail. You're above and not beneath. I can't get no help in here. The second thing is, is that I got to determine it. I got to determine it. That, that, that means uh, that, that I'm, I'm in the process. I'm working with God in the process of making this come to pass. God is not doing it all by himself. But God is using me to help me with me. Anybody God ever use you to help you with you? In other words, you find out how far you can go in order that you might know that God goes further. I, I can't get no help in here. Is there anybody here that know what I know that God will make you look at yourself? <laughs> but our problem is that we're looking at everybody else. These men in Ziklag, when they come in, they start looking at David when all they have to do is look at themselves. But you got to start determining it, determining it within. See, see, let me, let me, let me kind of retract and, and digress. And I, I want to take you back to the garden. Back in the garden, man knew his worth. But outside the garden, he lost his worth. Anybody got a one dollar bill? Give me a one dollar bill. Here's one. Okay. See, what man lost What man lost is his ability to know his value. <laughs> Come hold this mic. Come hold. Now you gotta hold it right in my mouth because I'm gonna I'm gonna be talking. Camera, get up, get a, get a focus on this. Okay, now, both these are made out of the same material. Got the same ink on it, right? And it costs the same to make both of them. But what 
<laughs> what separates it and makes it different is what? No, what makes the value? No, not the two do you. Not the two zeros. It's the image. See, see, God made us all the same. It's just how you see yourself. <laughs> see, see, if you see yourself as George, and you walk around like George, see, George is the only one who seemed to come to church. Because that's what you see. That's how you see yourself. See, you need to start packing some Benjamin. <laughs> so you can get this image out of your mind. Because you need to start packing this because this is where you're headed. See, am I making any sense? If you start saying what God said about you, you'll start becoming this. Instead of listening to that people, people will always make you feel like this. They make you feel like you ain't worth nothing. Though you made out of the same thing the rich man made out of. You're made out of the same thing anybody on this earth is made out of. But the only difference is, is how you see yourself. Now, I'm going to give you your, your dollar back. <laughs> because I'm headed to my wealthy place. <laughs> now, if you come to rob me, I don't carry these around. <laughs> it's in the bank. But I got something that can get it out. No, I don't want to trade. <laughs> see, see, that's what people are doing in life. See, they, they, they want what you got. And at any means necessary for the unsaved. Now, this brother was honest enough to come and ask me, could he have? But some folks would come try to do what they did to David, steal. <laughs> Okay? Now, when they got the zigzag, here's what happened. David's value was the same. Whether he had no wives or he had all his wives. And so what happened was that they had gotten so discouraged. And they had made each other feel like. And so here's the integral part when you are determining within inside to do whatever God called you to do is that you have to make sure that you, are, you make sure you control your self-esteem. See, you're in control of that. You're, you're in control of your self-esteem. Regardless of however big I have ever gotten in my life, I didn't let nobody make me feel like I wasn't important. I had, I had one, I had an older lady one time come to me, and she didn't mean no harm. You know, I was preaching in the Kojic church, and, and I was, and, you know, in, in, in the Kojic church, you know, there's, there's, there's holiness of hell. And, you know, and I, I believe in that too. And, I mean, she came to me, and she was, she was adamant about me being here a long time to preach the gospel. And she was on me about my weight, you know. She, she told me I was a, a great and dynamic preacher, and she built me up on one hand, and then she tore me down on the other. I mean, she didn't mean no harm. That was that just something, uh, just a, a cliche that she had been using, you know. And, and, and okay, and make a long story short, she come to me and she told me, she said, she said, you know what? The, your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, and the Lord, He's gonna use you mightily, but you gotta get that weight off you. And I, I agree with her. Yes, I do need to lose weight. I agree with. Her. I said, yes, ma'am. I, you know, but all the time she had a pinch of snuff in her mouth, you know. And my grandmother and them dipped snuff for years, and I know when you got snuff in your mouth. She had a pinch, and she thought nobody could see it. But I didn't say nothing about her flaw, you know. Okay. 
But anyway, she comes to me and she your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And, and you know what? The Lord going to use you, but you got to lose that weight so the Lord can keep you here a long time. Because people want to, yes, I want to be here a long time. And yes, I do need to lose weight. And then, you know, she was real small. You know, she was real thin and stuff. And, you know, and, and, and if anybody know me that really, really know me, you know, with, I don't talk very much in, in public. But if you know me one-on-one, I got a comeback for you. <laughs> you know, and um, and uh, she told me your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost and you know what you got to take care of the temple and I said well I can't help it now if uh, if you a storefront and I'm a mega church <laughs> see y'all will get that tomorrow some folks got it